Well, good morning, everybody. As promised, yesterday I told you that I worked here in the back in this viburnum bed, and I promised to show you what it looked like after I was finished. Now, if my camera work is a little bit wonky, it's because I kind of hurt my back this morning moving a pot. So I've got an ice pack on, and my movements may not be really smooth. At any rate, you can see that I have really pruned up the canopy of this Chinese Snowball Viburnum. And if you want to see the technique on a smaller scale, you can see that I did it on this winged euonymus here that's in a pot. And I'll demonstrate different types of plants that you can do this with. But in essence, what it does is it transforms a shrub into a small, or in this case, a very large tree. So let me answer some of the questions you all had yesterday regarding this area. So number one, you asked if I have a sprinkler system back here, how I watered this viburnum. I think one of the reasons it has flourished so is because I have a dedicated bubbler head, which means a dedicated drip line that's at the base. I don't think you can see it in the glare of the sun. But there is an irrigation system back here with a drip line that leads to a bubbler head that's right at the base. Now, I don't turn on my automatic in-ground irrigation system all the time. I leave it on manual and I only use it when necessary. So pretty soon it will be necessary because we've got temperatures in the 90s. But right now we've had enough moisture this spring that I don't need to do much residual watering in the beds. Now if you recall yesterday these geraniums weren't here. I've moved a little bit of color back here to draw the eye. I pulled out the nasturtiums that were in here. I didn't like the effect. And I replenished the gravel on top of this pot. This is a faux Italian clay. I like the cleaner look of it. You may ask what I did with the nasturtiums. I toss them in the compost pile because nasturtiums don't transplant easily and also it's really getting too hot for them to bloom. I think I must be disturbing some ongoing avian activity back here. You can see that birds love this viburnum. There's all sorts of wonderful branching for them to play in. If anybody knows what that bird is, please tell me. But I limbed it up. I cleaned this area out. I took out some of the limbs that were, oh, about the diameter of my pinky. And when I look at pictures over time, which I do when it's in bloom and when it's not in bloom, and I stand back, I can see if I think it's just looking too dense and if I want to open it up some. So now there's more light back here for the Nandina in the foreground for this Miss Lemon Abelia. I also down here replenished some gravel. A lot of you ask, do I have the entire beds mulched in gravel? No, I do not. Just in the foreground, in between most of the bricks and the flagstones that surround the grass. I did remove some of the chives and some of the lemon balm, but I left a little bit because I do like the way those chives bloom, and I do want uh, to be able to use that lemon balm, but I did cut it back hard. Now you see tufts of other things in here, and those tufts, for example, right here, there's lots of goldsturm rudbeckia that's back in here that will bloom especially now that it's getting more light. There used to be, you guys, masses and masses of it that was growing in perfusion in front of this gate. 
or entryway rather into the potage and it really just got too thuggish it went to seed aggressively if you want to see what it looked like it's in a couple of southern living issues from way back when so i keep it there but I use it more selectively now because it just got overly aggressive and it was becoming high maintenance. There is this misconception, I think, that perennials are low maintenance, but they are not. They need to be deadheaded, divided, and any plant in a space where you don't want it is a weed, even if it's a real, a real plant or a hybridized version of a plant. Now I've added something, if you guys haven't watched the garden tour yet, that I did of my friend Marquette's home, I stole this idea. So he had some torches, some citronella torches, that were around the perimeter of his garden. And I thought, oh my gosh, I need to do that too. So I had some inexpensive bamboo torches, you can see over there that blob of yellow in that bottle that is some citronella oil that I'm going to fill these guys with and I didn't like that bamboo color I thought it made them look cheap so I spray painted them uh, I will t talk about this a little bit more later but it's an olive garden green and it just matches the rest it kind of blends in and it will be effective I think for pest control along with some other measures I'm going to tell you guys about in an upcoming video. If you notice, that green on the torches is exactly the same green as that winter boar kale, which I've got to get out. So I'm starting to think about what I consider to be my Mediterranean garden phase of summer, and I'll talk more about that later. So this area has been cleaned out uh, and some of these pots, these clay pots, have been moved over here. I also mentioned that back there I was going to remove some overly aggressive monkey grass and I will do that but I'm going to transplant it probably next door at my neighbors. They can't grow grass because they've got too much shade so slowly I'm introducing with their permission some liriope over there so at least they have something to hold in the soil. But this area looks much better. The basket, the kind of cream colored basket back there, is holding a shrimp plant that will bloom in the exact same coral color as those geraniums in the foreground. And you'll notice that I elevated it on a plant stand. And this is something that helps me give instant height and that layering look that I so like in my garden. Something going on um, at varying heights. Now imagine, I said it yesterday and I'll say it again today, imagine if this large shrub, which started out again as an $11 shrub from Lowe's, was dense with this much foliage this grayish green foliage all the way to the ground. There would be no way that I would be able to grow anything underneath it. It would be too large for this space, too massive and dense for this space, but this enables me to have the beauty of its bloom in spring, but also be able to enjoy things planted underneath it. The wind is really kicking up today so I did my yard work early, hence my sore back. So I'll go put an ice pack, renew my, or replace the ice pack I've got on it now, refresh it. I'm going to be talking about some of these other container planters later. But it looks much tidier, and this is what is the focal point from my kitchen window and at the back of the garden so I'm very happy to have that work done and I will progress to these other areas a little bit later. I have some fun things to tell you about topiary.
You can see the wind is really starting to kick up. So let me show you. This wasn't part of my intent, but let me show you how the hydrangeas are doing. Some of the leaves are starting to get a little bit crispy because of the intensity of the sun. I think yesterday it got up to close to 98. In the south, there's two seasons before the heat and after the heat, and we definitely are in full-blown heat mode now. But this stuff that's in shade is liking a little bit of this breeze if the wind doesn't pick up too much to become desiccating. And then pretty soon this larkspur will be finished and I let some of it go to seed and then pull it out. I do love that two tour that I added to this pot. And I'm going to do a whole garden tour, you guys, showing the different kinds of ornament that I have and where I got most of the things. So there you can see from a distance that it looks much tidier. So if you want a comparison, go back and watch the video that I did yesterday. Helpful and instructive. I'll try not to blow away here.